So we need a way to analyze more complicated circuits. And we do that with these rules. If we want to Americanize the name or Texanize the name, in my case, it would be Kirchhoff's rules. If you want to go for the more legitimate pronunciation, which Professor Lewin does, so I think we should, it is Kirchhoff's rules. It's kind of fun to say Kirchhoff. So it is a systematic way to analyze circuits. So there are two. The first Kirchhoff rule is the junction rule. And the junction rule, if we state it mathematically, it's simply the sum at a junction of the current equals zero. Or you could also just say current in equals current out. We know that charge has to be conserved, so we can't have more current going into a junction than coming out. So let's look at a circuit and a junction. So we could get a slightly complicated circuit going like this, have a battery, and have the wire come out and go, say, to R1 here, and then have it split off and have a second resistor and have R2, like that. When you use Kirchhoff's rules, you have to start thinking about all the currents that are going to flow through the circuit. And first, you just pick a direction. Well, in this case, it's pretty clear if this is the positive side of the battery, that's the negative side. The current's probably going to go this way. So we'll say some current flows out of here like that. So we'll call the branch or the current going in this part I1, current 1. Then it's going to split. And then you just give it another name. So here, we'll say this is I2 going on the outside. This is I3 going down there. And then they're going to come back together. And again, this will be I1. And you can see it's all essentially the same wire. There's no branches in between. That's all I1. This line is I3. And this branch is I2. So let's look at this little junction right here. That's one of our junctions. So at the junction, we can uh, draw it, zoom in on it. We have I1, I2, uh, and I3. And you write your sum. You just say, here, let's sum them up. And when a current is going into the junction, it's positive. So you'd say, OK, the only one going in is I1. So I1 goes in, and the other two goes out go out. So when one goes out of a junction, it's negative. So minus I2, and then 3 is exiting the junction, minus I3 is 0. Or if we wanted to solve it for I1, we would just simply say the other statement that I gave, I1, equals I2 plus I3. That is that you can't lose current. Okay. So this is a very simple way to apply uh, Kirchhoff's um, junction rule in this case. We can even look at this other junction. Let's look at that junction and apply the same thing. Here we would have, let's see, I3 is going in, I3, and I2 is going in plus I2, and I1 is coming out, minus I1. Those equal zero. But if you solve this for I1, you get the same thing. And in this simple circuit, you're not surprised. But this actually illustrates something, and that is that you can't apply Kirchhoff's rules just to everything. You will overdetermine your system. What we're trying to do is set up a bunch of equations and a bunch of unknowns to get an answer. And sometimes, even though you apply Kirchhoff's rules to two different parts of the circuit, you're really learning the exact same thing. Okay? It's a little bit obvious here in this simple circuit, but in more complicated circuits, you might apply it in two places and you're actually not learning anything new. You can end up with sort of overdetermined circuits. So we may show you, or overdetermined equations. We may show you some later. If you're sort of messing around with all your algebra and end up with 0 equals 0, that means you overapplied these rules. But we'll get more into it as we keep going.